Royal Hospital for Sick Children and Department of Clinical Neurosciences is a collaboration of two different facilities in one building as part of an overall campus at Little France in Edinburgh. They're relocating the children's hospital from old facilities which are not particularly fit for purpose into a new fit for purpose facility. It's a national crisis centre. There is one on the west coast of Scotland and this is going to be the east coast one. So it covers um, major traumas from across the whole of Scotland. The biggest project that we'd actually delivered in BIM was Bradfield uh, Secondary School, which had been delivered from the Glasgow office. Um, and although it was much smaller scale, all you're doing is scaling up the, the building. So the, the model was broken down into smaller, manageable parts, but all of the, the processes and things that you go through are the same. It is the biggest single building that we've ever undertaken using BIM and it is full BIM level 2, completely in Archicad. It means that any other project in the entire organisation is just, just a walk in the park in comparison. Dollar drawings are produced uh, in the 3D model in Archicad. Um, the majority of the drawings are exported uh, PDF or Excel spreadsheets which are then uploaded into the Coma data environment. We have a model manager and a project information model manager in the office who will receive the engineer's models and then the federated model will then be discussed in design team meetings and in coordination meetings. Our external envelope model alone is 12 gigabytes. The internal upper and lower models are kind of four to five gigabytes each. So obviously when you're working in certain parts of the project, if you're part of the internals team, they don't necessarily need all our room loading equipment in there or the landscaping information. So we hot link in the, the various parts of the models to suit their needs and what they're working on. Previously, I know working, working for other companies, working in a drawing board and working in 2D AutoCAD environments, when you were asked to produce drawings, you would tend to do them through the easier parts of the building. Uh, you can't do that in BIM. Everything needs to be worked through. There's less corrective work to do when the job's on site. All the, the building's built in a model, first of all, and then thoroughly examined and then before they actually strike a blow on site. The 2D outputs are generated automatically from the 3D model so when the plans change, the elevations change, the sections change, everything changes together. With a project of such a size it's valued at around 150 million it takes a long time to, de to deliver that project and so the, the standards and the technologies that you use evolve with that. We're told that once you start a project you're supposed to stay at that particular version of Archicad as you're going through. Now on a project the size of you know, Royal Hospital for Sick Children, you can't really afford to do that because everybody still needs to be able to develop with the software. Now that project started in 2011 and if we'd stayed where we were then we would still be at version 15 um, and we'd have a significant team in the office who would still be using Archicad version 15 while everyone else had moved to 16, 17, 18. So we have actually kind of bitten the bullet and made sure that the staff have continued to learn and grow with the, the product. The IFC and the technology between Archicad and the Revit platforms wasn't as good as it is now, which was another reason for upgrading the software almost yearly, because there were improvements in, in the IFC format and interoperability between Archicad and Revit. It's important that that's evaluated and properly assessed for a good little while before we actually then say, right, we're going live on this and we're upgrading to the next session. The project has to stay on time, it has to stay to deadlines, etc., etc. So we can't afford to phone the client and say, uh, oops, we upgraded something and it's, you know, something horrible's happened and we ne now need to downgrade again. Um, so we've done it very, very carefully. Because of the type of projects that we use where there's huge multi-user environment and team working, 
because public sector hospital projects etc are very complex and involve huge teams of people, um, Archicad actually suits that better. There's been instances where we need the programme to be able to do certain things and we'll work with them to find the easiest way of doing that or is that going to be covered in the next iteration of the, the um, software etc um, just to make sure that it's constantly evolving and meeting our needs and that you know they're, they're getting the benefit of things that we've maybe tried that we think there's a slightly better way of doing things so um, it's a kind of two-way thing and hopefully it's helping to develop the software um, for the end users needs as well as uh, developing it for what we need it to be doing. It's a very close-knit group even though we're spread over a lot of offices. We've got pretty close contact to most of these other offices on a day-to-day -day basis, especially in a job this big. What we've learned from this project, we've been able to, um, you know, pass on to other projects and other teams in our other offices. You know, we've been <laughs> we've been through that pain so that they don't have to. It's meant a huge team of people in the office all working really, really closely together to deliver a project which I think at the end of it we're going to be really, really proud of.